In this lesson, I review the three types of networks through which data is made available, internet, intranet, and extranet. I also take a quick look at DMZs and VLANs. You can download the script for this lesson above or at the end of the lesson. There are three types of networks, intranet, internet, and extranet. Common network safeguards apply across all of these, but organizations must always perform risk assessments to determine additional needed controls. Let's take a look at each. An intranet is a traditional network that provides internal entity access to internal information resources. It's surrounded by a perimeter of firewalls and other controls that are fully controlled by the organization. It's important not to confuse the World Wide Web, or the Web, and the Internet. The Internet is a global interconnection of both public and private networks. Organizations that use the Internet have no control over its design and configuration outside of their own contracted services. It's a network upon which the Web runs. Services available on the Internet are commonly known as cloud services. Organizational traffic can use the Internet for access to both private resources and cloud services. The Internet is also used to enable two or more organizations to connect and provide services and data to each other. An extranet is a private network that's controlled by an organization. It allows access to partners, suppliers, vendors, and other business and infrastructure services. An extranet commonly sits in a segmented network segment that resembles a DMZ. A DMZ separates the internal network from resources made available to customers and other entities. It enables access to resources needed to enable business operation without exposing the internal network to unwanted access. The web server has access to the internal network, so it can access needed services. However, the remote entities are blocked from entering the internal network. This graphic from the CISSP Common Body of Knowledge shows the advantages and disadvantages associated with intranet use. In general, extranets enable an organization to share data, leverage vendor services, and collaborate with business partners at a relatively low cost. However, the cost can be even lower if the extranet services are moved to a cloud service provider. Finally, organizations using extranets must pay particular attention to the increased risk of system compromise, denial of service attacks, and data theft. Remote employees may access resources via the DMZ but it's more common to provide remote access using a VPN appliance. VPN is Virtual Private Network. The VPN appliance can be placed in the DMZ, but it can also stand alone. Users authenticate to the appliance, hopefully using multi-factor authentication, and are then granted course author authorization to approved resources on the internal network. Resource approval can be based on the user ID, time of day, day of the week, device used for access and the device's location, and other criteria. This is a look at one design possibility. There are many ways to configure remote access. A risk assessment, including a look at an organization's unique operational needs, determines the best approach and the right safeguards. Finally, we look at VLANs, or Virtual Local Area Networks. One of the most important network safeguards is the segmentation of resources according to classification and categorization, as well as separation of duties. To see how to classify and categorize assets, watch the video above. In this example, we placed our financial database servers in a separate VLAN. No users except the database administrators need access to these resources, and they are highly classified. The financial application servers are on another segment. The application servers have access to the database servers. Financial user roles can access the application servers and through them access data needed to perform daily tasks. The layer 3 switch 
is configured to block all traffic to the database segment unless it comes from the application server segment. Further, all traffic to the financial application servers is blocked unless it comes from the financial user VLAN. The CISSP Common Body of Knowledge asserts that VLANs are important to network security design because they control traffic between network segments. This helps ensure, for example, that a threat actor compromising a user device cannot access the entire internal network. They reduce sniffer vulnerabilities because a sniffer can only see the traffic on the segment to which it's attached. They help prevent traffic storms and they provide an infrastructure security layer that helps control least privilege, need to know, and separation of duties. Well, that's it for this lesson. If you have questions, please ask. And until next time, be careful what you click.